thanks to the ever-present threat of humanity's complete annihilation at the hands of a resentful AI. Gamers now have the opportunity to live virtual lives and experience reality in ways once thought to be forever delegated to the world of science fiction. Can you beat Untitled Goose Game without honking? Damn it. Well, that sucked. You cannot beat Untitled Goose Game without honking. Let's just consider that a minor setback and see how much of Untitled Goose Game you can complete without honking. After tearfully honking your way out of the bush, you're prompted to run around and play with the controls because most people have never been a goose. This is designed to get you comfortable being an annoying asshole. Thanks to the flexibility afforded to the goose via its loose and very ringable neck, you can bend down to avoid obstacles. But the benefits of being a goose do not stop there. You can also pick up all sorts of trash, tennis balls, and even pieces of metal several times heavier than the goose itself. Before spreading my wings and taking my place on the high seas, I got familiar with hiding in the grass, then finally took to the water to begin showboating and ruining somebody's picnic. I then went ahead and dragged some dirt into the water, providing another example of the disgusting raw strength of the goose, and checked my objectives. Nothing too complicated. I thought for a moment that the picnic it referenced was to take place on this blue napkin. After stealing the radio, I learned how wrong I was. In a panicked attempt to shock myself to death, I completed yet another objective by getting the groundskeeper wet. Once I got my radio back, I discovered that there are places on this earth where even a groundskeeper, despite the ground being in his name, won't go. I taunted him for a bit before breaking into the garden to begin putting the rake in the lake. It took me one attempt. The rake was where it belonged, in my private quarters. On my way back to the garden, I found the real picnic blanket and dropped a few things off on it. I tried to use the lawnmower and couldn't because this game is trash. How difficult would it have been to have a handle you can grab and pull to try to start the mower? To get over my disappointment, I started stealing all the carrots in the world. I got bored after about three and moved on to other things, like stealing the keys and hiding them in my museum of stolen objects. Using the goose's inherent ability to stealthily sneak into any environment, I entered the garden again and took the handheld shovel. The sprinkler system provided a distraction, allowing me to put the watering can where it belonged. Operation Pumpkin Patch was my next objective, rescue a pumpkin from the patch. This multifaceted mission was more convoluted than my mind can comprehend. I stole a pumpkin to distract the groundskeeper, allowing me to get by him and turn on the hose again, which got him out of the way so I could grab the jam and hide it in the bushes. By the time I had the jam, he was returning from shutting off the hose. It was then I took the pumpkin again, but the idiot fell for it, and I finally got the hand shovel, completing my mission in the process. A few minutes were spent moving my toys from their sanctuary to the picnic blanket. I also tried to offer a flower as a peace offering. He wasn't swept off his feet like I thought he would be. As a punishment, I hid his boots in the miniature jungle in the garden. The cooler called out to me like a siren in the sea. The orange and white made me think it belonged in my museum, which it did even if I didn't know it yet. With the jam now jamming with the radio and the other picnic objects, two objectives remained. Make the groundskeeper wear his sun hat and make him hammer his thumb. I had no idea how to do either of these, so I spent a while taking everything I could off to the museum for safekeeping. Things got a little cramped, which was when I did a bit of redecorating. I had a feeling that the hammer had something to do with the fractured thumb objective. I just wasn't exactly sure what role it had to play. I took it out of the garden and thought about what to do next. I dragged the hammer back inside and tried being a giant pain in the ass towards the groundskeeper. Nothing worked. Dragging the sign off into the jungle like the smoke monster didn't work either. If nothing else, I could do the other objective. In the process of harassing the groundskeeper, I got us both locked out of the garden. I brought the keys back, not because I respect the man, but because he would need the keys if I was going to get that hat. Steal the flower and rip the hat off his head as he's bent over. This was harder than it should have been because I kept going the wrong way. Eventually, I got his hat in the water and only one thing remained. The main problem here is that I am a stupid goose and my honker has been metaphorically taped shut by the man, prohibiting me from following in my ancestors' webbed footsteps by harassing anything that moves with my honking. The problem wouldn't solve itself, so I raided the garden for a cabbage, pushed it through a hole, into the river, and spent a while trying to get it onto the blanket. My idea was that if I could complete all the to-do-as-well objectives, maybe I could move on to the next area. 
I'll tell you now that that didn't work. As luck would have it, you cannot proceed in the game without making the groundskeeper hammer his thumb. And you can't do that without honking. I'd already failed the challenge, so I figured I might as well bite the rake and honk at him. If I can't beat the game without honking, I could at least try to beat the game by honking as few times as possible. Before going in for the kill, I reset the game in one last ditch effort to try anything. Guess what? After a reset, you have to honk to start playing again. Really just an unfortunate situation all around. I did it, I didn't really have any other options, made the guy hammer his thumb, and got into the next area. Things aren't as bad as they seem, because there's a child to harass. The very first thing I did was steal his toy plane to play with it myself. I also started taking it back to the museum, which is where I learned that his parents fitted him with a shock collar to keep him from getting lured into a van with candy and driven away forever. So he can't go into the garden to get his toy back. After fucking with his shoelaces to appease the goose gods, I stole his glasses and put them with the toy plane, rake, hammer, and sign. I tried picking at his eyes as he cowered on the ground. Didn't work though. Good news is, there's a new list of activities for the goose to do. Including being assaulted by a broom and then dismantling the broom as a distraction and thinking that that plaid doormat was an automatic door opener. I broke the broom again, snagged the glasses, and made the kid look a right fool. I'd crossed two things off the list, four remained, and I had the brain cells necessary to do at least one of them. The problem is that the basket is in the woman's territory. As I waddled around with a beak full of paper, I saw her steal my hairbrush from her basket. I took a brisk walk around the area, looking for openings to attack the street shop and wallowing in my depressingly feathered existence. A third broom-breaking accident let me take a celery and briefly pretend to be a far-fetched. This was another masterfully executed distraction, designed to take the broom and break free of the chains of oppression, and also steal an orange. I kept gathering objects until I had myself a little nest just outside the woman's field of view. But I put that on hold to try and lock the boy in the phone booth. You know, make him face his fears. I'm a good parent. He needs to learn to embrace the fear, even if it kills him. I had no ideas, tried nothing, and lost all hope of succeeding. My only thought now was taunting the shit out of the woman and testing the limits of her flexibility. Then I discovered that you can drag the basket. This was a game changer. I filled the cart with all my stuff until only the toothbrush and cleaning fluid remained. The woman was more perceptive than I gave her credit for. She was onto my little scheme. I thought to bash her skull in with the hammer. When I stole my canned goods, I put that plan on hold to drag my basket of valuables to safety. There were some setbacks, uneven cement and whatnot, but I managed to put things out of the reach of the woman. As I stood in place for several years, I realized that the task I'd assigned myself was impossible. But just like a goose, I didn't give a fuck about the expectations of anyone, and if Fallout 3 has taught me anything, it's that you can always count on speedrunning tactics to save the day. I started a new save, and honked myself out of the bush again, grabbed the boot, and got to work. A simple gate is no match for a goose with a boot. Just past the bridge is a red brick wall with a railing on top. You can hear an old man performing a goose mating call on the other side. If you take the boot to where the bricks meet the shrub, you can perform a glitch that lets you take advantage of the infinity stone the goose has and phase through the wall. I got close a few times, but because I suck at anything involving fine motor skills or motor oil in general, I got the boot through the wall, dropped it, and couldn't reach it. That's the only boot that can be carried off the ground, which means to try again, you must reset the game, go back to the starting area, grab the boot, and take it to the wall again. Tedious, but not all that difficult. It takes like 45 seconds. What took far longer than 45 seconds was getting through that fucking wall. I did try it with a sandwich at one point, which didn't work. It didn't work with an apple either, if you can believe that. I don't want to waste too much time on this, but I'll tell you now that it took me about 25 minutes just to perform this one little trick that most doctors don't want you to know. When I finally managed to do it, I was in awe of what this one little goose had achieved. I stood there with my trophy for a bit, basking in the warm glow of my now massively inflated ego. But this is nothing. The tricks have only just begun. In the speedrun I watched, they glitched through this door with a boot. Luckily for me, time means nothing. Gooses live forever. I didn't need to phase through the door. I could just as easily follow the cute delivery boy inside and proceed to my next trial. Put the plate deep in my beak and use it to break the laws of the universe. It's easier than it sounds. A few attempts were all it took. From there, it's a brief swim and you're onto the set of the next Godzilla movie. 
Again, time is not of the essence. So I took my time, waddling through the land of midgets, until I got to the sand castle, where I could do a weird thing with my neck and peck away at the sand until the frame revealed itself. Several forceful tugs later, the golden bell was rescued from its castle by the prince, and I backtracked my way through the town with my prize. Remember that corner I glitched through with a plate? I had to do that again. It was a giant floppy monster of a task. Get into the corner, turn, and let your neck hang down. That'll push you through the wall enough to let you waddle through the fence. It felt like it took longer than it actually did. Like 10 minutes maybe. Once I got through it, I did a few victory laps, paid respect to the boot for getting me to where I am today, and was nearly ready. The time had almost come for the second battle of Hoover Dam. The same neck stretch technique is used to put the bell through the fence, where it can fall into the river. Then you snag a plate and do something similar to the first glitch with the boot. As you would expect, the speed run made this look easy as shit. Run up to the corner, do the thing, and that's it. Of course, it's not that easy. The one good thing I'll say is that despite being very worried, I never lost the plate through the fence. My concern was that I'd drop it, not be able to get it back, and have to reset. And who knows where that reset would have put me. I was a lucky ducky and got back into the water, which was where my heart sank. The bell was gone. All that hard work, a complete waste of time. Then I noticed that the plate was gone too. It was the realistic water irrigation system at work. The bell floated down the river. I retrieved it and went back to my sanctuary. With the bell in my beak, I did a few victory laps around the stump, ducked under the log like a pro, and annoyed every creature in a 10 mile radius by walking in circles and ringing the bell like a madman. I waddled to the hole at the end of the path, added another bell to my collection, and did not beat Untitled Goose Game without honking. And that's gonna do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Untitled Goose Game without honking. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as the other channel members for helping make videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.